Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Taskmaster Tuesday. For this one, we have an interesting challenge where it is both our tasks to build the most expensive ship and the worst ship. And that is an interesting contradiction because usually a ship that is expensive also has some very, well, fairly high tech. And that usually makes it more effective in battle. Um, in this situation, we have a uh, junior Russian admiral. That's the role that we're playing. And we're tasked with building Russia's first ever dreadnought battleships in 1915. The Tsar has demanded that they are to be the most expensive ships in the world. But you know, the Tsar isn't exactly an expert in naval architecture, and your rival and senior admiral is supposed to take command of these warships against the Germans. You must design a battleship that has at least 8 to 12 inch guns, although the Tsar would be more than happy for you to exceed this. The cost of the ship, as displayed in the ship designer, earns points as follows. The most expensive ship is 4 points, and this expensive gradient goes between us YouTubers. And the YouTubers partaking in this challenge are, of course, Every Day is Different, History Guy Gaming, Spartan, and Brother Munro. And Brother Munro is the one who came up with the scenario for this week. So, whichever 5 of us has the most expensive ship gains 4 points. If you have the cheapest ship, you gain 0 points, and it is gradient from 0 to 4. Now, once we have the ships built, you then watch your rival, and this is not another YouTuber, but this is actually the senior admiral. You watch them take these five ships against five 1915 German tech, uh, or 1915 tech German battleships at a start of 30,000 meters. Watch with glee as his ships fail and sink. And they were the most expensive ships in the world. So all of this is clearly his fault. So there's a bit of subterfuge going on in this scenario. I am to be providing both the most expensive and the worst battleship. It has to be both expensive and very combat ineffective. Now, as the senior admiral, so the one who's actually going to be commanding the ships in battle, I must play the battle as if I'm trying to win. So there's no turning my guns off or something like that. However, you earn points based on the game time remaining according to the clock in game once all your ships are sunk. So you want to be the ships, or you want to be the player who sinks, well, no, who sinks their ships, who has their ships sunk the fastest. And again, if you are the first one to have all of your ships sunk, you gain four points. If you are the slowest, you gain no points. The Admiral with the highest combined total is the winner. So you gain points for the most expensive and the ships which are downed the quickest. And this means that, well, Normally we can sort of share our results before the video actually goes live. This time around, not so much. This time around we're actually going to have to see and, well, wait and see what the other guys do. And of course I have linked to the other guys down below in the description. So be sure to check out what sort of, well, excellent or terrible battleship dreadnoughts they make. Now let's have a look. If I'm going to be building an expensive ship, we're going to start with the most displacement. Does that even matter that much? It's 16.6. 15. Oh, okay, it's half a mil. One, one and a half mil. Um, speed. Ooh, speed ramps up the price a lot. I like that. Range. Million-ish. Bulkheads, all of them. Engines, these are more expensive, right? Oh yes. Oil is more expensive. Boilers, induced, that's 33.5, 33.2, 8 yes. Auxiliary engines, these also make the ship more expensive. 35, whoa, that was a good jump, that was 1.2 million. 36 million. Engine shafts, another two and a half million. Uh, Armor-wise, this is also going to come at a nice cost. 220% armor costs. Barbettes, um, are they expensive? Maybe not currently, because I don't have any. Let's just have a look. How much does that change? No, nothing? Wait. Okay, so armoring a barbette is free, as far as the game is concerned. 
Really? Yes, really. Okay, so that just adds to displacement. In that case, I might run without any barbette thickness. Because with as little barbette thickness as possible, or no barbette thickness, so no barbette armor, I actually want to incite flash fires. Torpedo blister. Ah, that adds a bit. That adds a bit. About 800k. Hole. There we go. Bulkheads. Yes, please. Anti-flooding system. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Citadel. We just went to 43.3. Or 43.8. Yes. Alright, this is where you can really make some... Uh, well, make some money. Or spend some money. Usually, anyway. Because normally, when you go to autoloaders, the thing gets really expensive. This time around, not so much. Turrets. Ooh. That adds quite a bit, but also to the weight. And I still have to add all of my weapon systems. Uh, and that's going to be at least four and a half thousand tons. So I'm going to have to spend quite a lot on that. Um, radio. That's 300k. It's not terribly useful. Stereo 3. Nah, it's 300k. It's not terribly expensive again. Uh, secondary tower. That'd be a nice place to put another 12-inch gun. Now, it has to have 12 of... Sorry, 8 12-inch guns. These are a million each. This is 500k. Haha. <laughs> It is actually more efficient to set these things up in duels, potentially even triples. But if you're looking at the price per turret at 500k, it might be more, well, price inefficient, which is what I'm looking for, to set these things up singular. Unfortunately, I can only have a total of six turrets, but I'm not sure if that's shared between side-mounted turrets, wing turrets. It is not. It is not. Okay, that's excellent. That means that I can probably get my 12, oh, sorry, 8 12 inch guns, but just place them down in the most expensive way possible, which is like that. <laughs> right. Um, and you know what? I'll set up a... Uh, yeah, see? Side guns is now grayed out. Center line, 12 inch. Singular, singular. Uh, yeah, that's actually it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guns. Is it going to be efficient? Um, I hope not. I really, really hope not. Now, the price of the ship is currently 52.4 million. We are, unfortunately, a little over budget. Well, not actually budget, but displacement. Um, how can I fix that? And also, what can I do to incite more flash fires? This is 40%. I think that is the best that you go... Well, the, the worst that you're going to get. This, however, increases shelf... Ooh, that's another 2 million in shells. Do you see that? Shell cost, 650%. 850% shell cost. 54 million. Um, that's another million and a half? Is it? No, one million three. Still, I like it. Heavy shells, 57 million. We're still overweight. And this time around, I actually don't mind. I want the ship to go overweight. Because by doing that, that four weight offset is going to mean that my ships do less damage in battle. Um, you know what? This is not actually cheating. This is just making sure that my turrets are bound to cause flash fires. Because I'm running no armor on the turrets. Oh, hold on. There's one more thing that I might need to add, which is a funnel. Uh, how expensive are these? 90k all the way up to 360k, but that's 730 tons for a funnel. 
<laughs> right. Uh, I imagine I can't set the thing up anywhere else. No, okay. That fits really, <laughs> really snugly. <laughs> okay. Um... See, down armoring the ship. Oh, that's a bit much. It kind of works. Because it means that the ship is going to be easier to kill off. Uh, I want the conning tower down. Because the conning tower means accuracy on the guns, and I don't want that. I want my ship sunk as quickly as possible. Uh, belt armor. Let's see, we're starting at 30,000 meters. But the thing is, these are dreadnoughts. They won't fire accurately in 1915. So I could reduce deck armor, but that wouldn't really help me. That wouldn't really help me too much. Is a torpedo launcher expensive? No. It's really not. Is there anything else that I can make this ship more expensive with? That's maxed out, maxed out. No, no that just reduces it. We're max on aux, max on shafts, uh, max on anti-torp, which is another one of those things that makes your ship more expensive. We're currently in 56.5. That's not too bad. 56.8. Oh, that's good. That means I can fire faster with guns that are bound to fly off the ship anyway. So, who needs belt armor anyway? Oh. I cannot go lower than 8 inch. Okay. Alright. Oh, I can for the belt extended. Who need What? <laughs> Who needs belt extended armor anyway? Uh, the secondaries don't matter. Turret top. I could probably put the armor back on there, because there it's pretty much useless. It feels like I'm playing the spy again. Where the mission is to design a pretty terrible ship. It is the most expensive, or at least it's 56.8, which I think is a really good shot. Really nice in the direction of making this thing as expensive as possible. The turret setup is atrocious. I have a pretty hefty four weight offset that I'm going to make even worse. Because the more four weight offset I have, the more the ship is going to heave up and down. Uh, that's the longitudinal weight offset. So this means that I get an accuracy penalty of 8.3%. Plus, I start flooding faster. My acceleration is worse. My rudder shift is worse. Uh, I just slow down faster. Well, that's not surprising. The bow is just deeper into the water. So all of these things should contribute to this Borodino to be a pretty terrible ship. Now, the second part of this challenge is to sink as quickly as possible. So that's where the 36 knots is going to come in very handy. Because at 36 knots, I'm able to close the distance, which is quite far, the 30,000 meters. But this is going to make it pretty damn quick. So let's get to war and uh, <laughs> use our 14.2% engine efficiency to get over to the enemy. I really wonder how the other guys just decided to go for this battle. Oh, we're... shit. Look at that turning circle. 1300 meters! Good lord, I hope they brought torpedoes. Because I'll never be able to avoid those. To the north we go. At 26 knots. And climbing. Slowly. Borodino is the lead ship, 26.8, 26.9. This thing takes forever to speed up. Acceleration, 0 0.001 knot per second. Fantastic. Now, bow shots are going to be pretty dreadful. Because I think that this turret won't even be able to fire over the other one. Oh, we found something. And on top of that... The wing turrets might not even work because the main superstructure is in the way. At least that's my hope. So, let's make you a nice thumbnail. Right there. 
and try not to kill the enemy, right? Because I need their firepower to hit me. Uh, formation... No, just line of rest. Hello, gentlemen. Kriegsmarine is here. And I wonder if they're going to be able to do something useful. Like sink my ships. Now, I have to be making sure that these guys get close so that I flood faster. Because I have zero belt extended armor, so anything that just looks at me sideways is going to penetrate this hull immediately. I also hope that the zero turret armor is going to quickly detonate these things. Just get the full HUD experience, flash fire the shit out of this thing. We have taken our first point of damage. Singular. Oh, actually 1.8, my bad. Now, what do these German ships have? Six guns and a whole lot of casemates. Normally, I just ignore the casemates altogether. But, this time around, I have no armor. So this time around, even a 6-inch gun can probably do quite a lot of damage to these dreadnoughts. The Borodino. Oh, shit. Could you stop doing damage, please? Now, I have to play like I'm trying to win. Which means that I want to try and get some sort of broadside off, but at the same time I have to lose. So I'm in a bit of a, a conflicting situation here. Shit. Could you stop being so effective? Damage to the main gun, yes. No, 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 no. Stop killing the Saxon. Please have maximum bulkheads. Standard, I'll take it. Stop killing the Saxon. We need her alive. We need those guns on the Borodino and the rest of the ships. Uh, just turn hard to starboard and hope that the guns temp- Oh, okay, fine. Hard to port. And hope that the guns temporarily won't be able to keep track. Oh, yes, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. Two flash fires. Who wants more? Three flash fire. No, two, two flash fires and an ammo detonation. Yes. But how is this possible? These are the most expensive ships in the world. How is this possible? How are we getting sunk with a 37,000 ton ship by something the size of a 25,100 ton ship? What is this sorcery? Borodino is pretty poorly. <laughs> She's flooding. But this is where my anti-flood system is going to probably bite me. Yeah, I want you guys to continue. Come on, finish off the Borodino. Get another flash fire or something. Oh, see? Saxon has already pumped out the water. Excellent. Well done. Uh, damage to the main tower. The funnel's been destroyed. Damage to the main weapon systems, of course. Because those turrets... Well... Look at that angle! <laughs> We need turrets anyways. Damage to the main gun. Come on, make an effort. Hey, flash fire on the Veliki. Which probably means that the flat Oh, that was three flash fires? Yep, one, two, three. I'm also getting torpedoed. Borodino, sink, structural fire. She just... How many flash fires did you get? All of them? Yep, the whole midsection of turrets is gone. And the one on the port aft. Looks like Archangel Gavril is next. This is what happens when you don't armor your turrets. I was wondering how effective it was going to be. Whether the game would secretly go, no, you can't have that. And just put some sort of armor on there, but no. So the Archangel also lost her bow turrets. And now it's just a matter of waiting for a disaster. When are those midship turrets gonna go? Because go, they will. Unfortunately, it might come at the expense of the König Albert. Sviato and Sergei, do the Russian thing and charge them. Knias, 
You're flooding. I'm kind of concerned that your anti-flood is going to save you. Which again, as weird as it sounds, is not my intent. There goes the Cunning Albert. See, at least my... Uh... Hold on. Did you just... Yep. I don't even need the enemy to sink my own ships, because my own ships are doing it themselves. I got hit by my own battleship. I think that was the Sviatoi that hit the Archangel. And it caused an ammo detonation. So, battlecruiser or no, my ships are definitely getting the full hood experience. Flash fires galore. Hey, another ammo detonation. <laughs> How are we doing, guys? Borodino is still on the way down. We got the Veliki. Damage to the main gun and flash. No, fire. Oh shit, that's not my ship. That's oh! Oh no. Oh dear. Um, let's see, I have to. Ah, oh, there we go. More ammo detonation on the Sphere Toy. We still have the uh, Rodestvo, which is coming in all the way behind the rest. <laughs> I can't even hit him. Flash fire! Hey, there goes another one. Another flash fire. I should start putting these things on mugs. The full HUD experience. <clears throat> How's that for merchandising? Sviatoy Sergei. Can you please flood? Ooh, the Niaz is almost down. The Veliki. Another ammo detonation. Most of the ship's on fire, at least in the stern. Point two, another flash fire. And gone. Structural damage. <laughs> and another flash fire. So far, I have only spent less than 34 minutes, and I've already lost three ships. Three? No, two. I'm still waiting for these guys to get killed off, but it seems like the Germans are a little busy trying to finish off the Archangel, which, even if she wanted to, can't properly turn. Flooding on the Kronprinz, could you not? Hey, the Kronprinz is getting flash fires. That's not part of the plan. That's not what I want. Destroy the casemate. No, turn bow in. Because that gives you less guns to fire at the enemy. There you go. Big ammo detonation on the Rosdestvo. <coughs> there we go. Bounced off. I'm actually trying to get this Saxon to angle as much as possible away from my ship. Because I don't want to sink her. There goes another flash fire. Is that all of them? No, it's not quite all of them. Rodestvo's bow is not looking pretty. Alright, Arkangul. How many Germans do we have left? Whoa, just the one? Nah. Oh, shit. We have just the one left. I gotta be careful with the Saxon, or she'll... She'll not kill me. I hope HE is not gonna do too much against her. Uh, reinforced bulkheads one. Hmm, it's not great. I was hoping for two, but I'll take one. There we go. I have to just keep these things circling to make sure that the guns don't track as quickly. And unfortunately, I put pretty fast turrets on this thing. What are you trying to hit? Come on, make an effort. Saxon can easily... No, not even? It can't easily pen me? Come on now. Oh, 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 oh. Flash fire twice. Flooding all over the place. 
I need to I need to ram a sinking ship. But there ah uh, there aren't any Saxons on fire. But otherwise okay, she still has all her guns. Rodestvo angrily sailing past the ship. There she goes. Heavy flooding. Excellent. Alright, who's next? It looks like they're now after the Gavril. I have no belt armor to speak of. You have 8 inch casemate guns. I suggest you make them work. Look at this range finding difference though. 96% chance to hit. 40%. That's a coincidence. 3. It shouldn't be that bad. Ammo detonation. Yes. Sink this thing. More fires. Ships going down. We're starting to flood. The Niaz should also not need too much more motivation to go down. But I'm already approaching 45 minutes that these ships have survived. And they've actually... Well... Almost, intent, almost accidentally... Sunk quite a few of the German ships. Um, yeah, now I want the Archangel to, to even out. But now her rudder's stuck. Because now this ship has a pretty good broadside onto the Archangel. Go on. Oh, come on, turn you numbnut. I need you to turn. Because I need that bow turret on my ship. Just stop. Your ship's gonna slow down to five knots? Whoa. Alright. So what started at 36 knots, after taking on a ton of water and losing three engines, is now down to five. Oh. AI. Normally, I curse you for not being accurate. Now I again curse you for not being accurate, but for an entirely different reason. Come on, buddy. Come on. Neither of these ships are terribly maneuverable, so it's not like I can easily get alongside this ship to make it more, well, let's say make the broadside more accessible. I just don't really have a good way of getting advantages for the Saxon at this point. And in a way, she's lucky that I'm not firing AP because I probably would have killed her at this point. Times five. Come on. If I keep setting fires on that ship and they don't put them out in time, I might burn it down. Or just whittle it down until the structural integrity fails. See, another fire. Structural seems fine though, I'm not actually doing that much damage. Good lord, come on. 15% chance to hit? To the secondary. No, I don't want damage to the secondary tower. I want damage to the ship. I want floodings. I want flash fires. I want all the things. How many guns do you still have? Nothing. One on the bow. Nothing on the stern. Hey! Now I got nothing on the bow. Good man. I'm a detonation. Flash fire. Lots of flooding. She's gone. Good, now I just need to s get rid of one more. Um, Saxon's accuracy with the 8-inch casemate is pretty good. I just don't know if the 8-inch casemate is going to be enough to actually pen this ship. Because I do have 98% boost armor quality. But 98% boost of nothing should still mean that the bow belt, sorry, that the belt extended can get penetrated. I really, really enjoy these scenarios where it's sort of flipping the whole game upside down and instead of trying to make the best ship that you can, you're trying to make the worst. You're trying to make something that ideally doesn't work. And that ideally sinks as quickly as possible. 
instead of delivering hammer blows with 18 inch guns and such. This is gonna cost me a lot of time. No, I should be evening out. I should be flattening out. I'm ricocheting. I don't want to ricochet. Sink me. Come on, Saxon. Ricochet chances average, pen chances. Oh, yes, please. Okay, 859.20. 859.20. That's the time I got. Let's see, let me write that down. 859.20, which means it took one hour and 40 seconds to kill me. Not too bad. Uh, retry, yes. Ship cost was 56.829.920. That's how expensive the ship was. And they did fantastically poorly. They encountered five German Dreadnoughts, which were definitely lower tech, fewer guns, probably less expensive, and less displacement. And yet, yet this Admiral commanding these most expensive ships utterly, utterly failed. But the real question remains, who failed the hardest? And for that, I invite you to have a look at the other guys' videos. You can find those linked down below in the description. And I look forward to seeing how quickly they failed themselves. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. Anyway, guys, that's it for this Taskmaster Tuesday. If you have a scenario that you'd like us to play, then please post that down below in the comment section. This is the only type of video where I accept those kind of submissions. For normal scenarios, please go through the form that you can find in the description. Um, if you have a scenario in the comment section that you particularly like, uh, that please does not introduce a lot of RNG because... We do this with the five of us, and the more RNG there is, the more diverse the attempts will be. So if you see one that you like, please upvote it, give it that little thumbs up, and that way we can sort of auto-filter what sort of scenario would probably be fun to play. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you had fun with this terrible chip, the Borodino class, and I shall catch you guys soon for another Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts video.